Very happy to have all of you here today, and uh, we have a very, very special guest here. Uh, His Holiness Srila Bhakti Vigna Vinasha Narasimha Maharaj. After three years, so finally we have Maharaj's presence here in Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur. Uh, so I think many of you know Maharaj already. So we'll start the program. It's already eight five. We'll have Maharaj sing the Jai Radha Madhava. Is it okay? You can put it up. Yeah, I didn't want, I was going to sing Jastamati Nandan first, Sri Nam Kirtan. I think you should know. Jastamati Nandan Nabraja Bharanakara Gokula Ranjana Kana Yasomati Nandana Brajabara Nagara Gokula Ranjana Kana Gopi Padana Dana Madana Manohara Gopi Padana Dana Madana Manohara Kaliya Dhamana Vidana Kaliya Dhammana Vidvahana Amala Harinam Amiya Vilasa Amala Harinam Amiya Vilasa Itina Puranda Dana Vinana Karabara Vamsi Vatana Suvasa Vipina Puranda Dana Vinana Karabara Sam Sivadana Suvasa Raja Janapalana Surakulana Shana Raja Janapalana Surakulana Shana Nanda Godana Rakohala Nanda Godana Rakohala Govinda Pada Bhana Vanita Taskara Govinda Pada Bhana Vanita Taskara Sundara Nanda Gopala Sundara 
ಸುಂದರ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಕಥಾಚಾರ ಗೋಪಿ ವಾಸನ ಹಾರ ಯಾಮನ ಕಥಾಚಾರ ಗೋಪಿ ವಾಸನ ಹಾರ ರಸಾರಸಿಕ ಕೃಪ ಮಹಾಯ ರಸಾರಸಿಕ ಕೃಪ ಮಹಾಯ ಪತಿ ದೀನೋದ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಹರಿ ನಾಮಿಯಾಸ ನವನಿ ತಾಸ್ಕರ ಶ್ರೀರೋದಿ ವಿನೋದ ಶ್ರಹಾಯ ಜೈ ಹಾಧಿಹಾರಿ ಜೈ ಹಾಧಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಪಲ್ಲಿ ಬರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಪಲ್ಲಿ ಬರಿ ಯಾಶೋದ ನಂಜನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಾಶೋದ ನಂಜನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಾಮನ ಸೌರ ವನ ಯಾಮನಚೇರಿ ಜ 
Gopi jana pala bhagir bhada hari Gopi jana pala bhagir bhada hari
Oh, thank you very much. Beautiful. I want you to read the verse, Prabhu. Here, I, I'll never see anything in this light. The light is very poor. Okay. 1326. Okay. You can read the verse. I'll, I'll give the class. Hare Krishna. This is from Bhagavad Gita as it is. Chapter 13, verse 26. Anye to evan majananta Sutva gevya upasate Te api chati taranti eva Vrityum shruti parayana Again, uh, I'll just say a word to us. Anye others to but even this ajananta without spiritual knowledge Strutva by hearing Anyebhya from others, Upasati begin to worship Te, De, Api also, Cha and Atitaranti transcend Eva certainly, Mrityum, the path of death, Shruti Parayana inclined to the process of hearing. Translation Again, there are those who, although not conversant in spiritual knowledge, begin to worship the Supreme Person upon hearing about Him from others. Because of their tendency to hear from authorities, they also transcend the path of birth and death. Purport by His Divine Grace, Nisi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shreya Prabhupada, this verse is particularly applicable to modern society because in modern society there is practically no education in spiritual matters. Some of the people may appear to be atheistic or agnostic or philosophical, but actually there is no knowledge of philosophy. As for the common man, if he is a good soul, even there is a chance for advancement by hearing. This hearing process is very important. Lord Chaitanya, who preached Krishna consciousness in the modern world, gave great stress to hearing because if the common man simply hears from authoritative sources, he can progress, especially according to Lord Chaitanya, if he hears 
the transcendental vibration of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It is stated, therefore, that all men should take advantage of hearing from realized souls and gradually become able to understand everything. The worship of the Supreme Lord will then undoubtedly take place. Lord Chaitanya has said that in this age, no one needs to change his position, but one should give up the endeavor to understand the absolute truth by speculative reasoning. One should learn to become the servant of those who are in knowledge of the Supreme Lord. If one is fortunate enough to take shelter of a pure devotee, Hear from him about self-realization and follow in his footsteps, he will be gradually elevated to the position of a pure devotee. In this verse, particularly, the process of hearing is strongly recommended, and this is very appropriate. Although the common man is often not as capable as so-called philosophers, faithful hearing from an authoritative person will help one transcend this material existence and go back to Godhead, back to home. Sura Prabhupada Sita is Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Scha he Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha kaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha nama om vishnu padaya krishna prastaya bhutale shrimati bhakti vedanta swaminiti namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadvaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So by the blessings of the technology which is available these days, we haven't really been separated very much because with the help of technology we can have we've been having regular classes and interaction so although it's been some time since we've all been physically together we've always been together regularly we've been together but by the help of sound waves and so anyway it's the physical presence is especially important well you get benefit just simply from the sound waves the physical presence is 
even more powerful being together. Uh, we want to take advantage of that physical presence to hear. We come here to this temple, to this our Krishna conscious Jagannath Mandir. We're coming here for the purpose of hearing. This is the most fundamental, the initiation of our Krishna conscious process comes about with hearing first of all and then the chanting of course follows. Once we've heard properly then we will want to repeat. So in Bhagavad Gita Lord Krishna had described his yoga ladder and the conclusion of the sixth chapter was that bhakti is at the top of the yoga ladder and so then in the seventh chapter Lord Krishna immediately begins to stress the importance of hearing. The very first verse of the seventh chapter, Lord Krishna says, Now hear from me, O Arjuna, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, you can know me in full free from doubt. So hearing is how Krishna conscious, uh, our bhakti yoga begins. The first process is shravanam and then comes kirtan. So first we hear and we're encouraged to hear regularly and for a long time. Just like chanting, we have to do it regularly. Chanting is the medicine. So hearing is also part of that program. By hearing nicely, then we will be encouraged to chant also. If we don't hear regularly, it will be difficult for us to keep up the chanting. It often happens that people minimize the importance of chanting. The reason why they stop chanting, why they forget about chanting, is because they forgot to hear. They didn't hear carefully and they didn't hear regularly. So Lord Chaitanya gave great importance to the hearing process. He asked Ramananda Rai to give him a verse from the scriptures about the goal of life. And Ramananda Rai began by first of all describing a verse from the scriptures which proclaims following Varnashram as being the goal of life and the perfection of life. But Lord Chaitanya dismissed that. I said, that is external. And then Ramananda Roy suggested that one could simply offer the results of one's work. Karmarpana. And Lord Chaitanya said, go further. And then Ramananda Roy suggested, Swadharma Tiag, giving up all duties. But Lord Chaitanya also was not satisfied with that. And then Ramananda Roy gave another verse from Bhagavad Gita which describes Jnana Mishra Bhakti, Bhakti Yoga mixed with Jnana, which is mixed with the impersonal understanding. So certainly Lord Chaitanya also rejected that. And then finally Ramananda Roy was able to give the conclusion which Lord Chaitanya was very happy to hear that the ultimate goal of life Jnane Prayasam Udapashya Namanta Eva Jivanti San Mukaritam Bhavadiya Vartam Stani Stita Shruti Gatan Tanvan Manobir Ye Prayasi Jitopi Asi Taishri Lokyam the meaning is that one should remain in whatever position one is in. Sometimes people think, oh, it's important to renounce. I should become a sannyasi or I should... They're thinking sometimes they have to give up their position. But rather, Lord Chaitanya took this verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, rather Ramananda Rai, he quoted the verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, spoken by Lord Brahma, and describing that one doesn't need to change one's position. One simply remains in whatever position one is in. 
and hears about Krishna in the association of devotees. That is the important point. You have to hear in the association of devotees. We don't want to hear from other people. The other day, I think last weekend, we were having Gita Jayanti and I'm sure you were also reciting the Bhagavad Gita, right? Did you all recite the Bhagavad Gita? Yeah? And so, uh, there are many editions of the Bhagavad Gita and sometimes you will find people, they've written a Bhagavad Gita, they're, they're Mayavadis impersonalists, they've written a commentary on Bhagavad Gita and you may look at it and you may see, oh, their translation is almost the same as our translation. That there's no difference. The translate, certainly the Sanskrit will be the same and the translation may also be the same. So you cannot tell who is the devotee and who is not the devotee just by hearing the translation. The translation of the verse may be the same, but the purports are not the same. When you hear the purport, then you can immediately understand what is the position of the commentator. Is he following the parampara? Is he a devotee or is he some impersonalist. So it's the purports which are really the key to understanding the Bhagavad Gita. Many people chant the Bhagavad Gita and they, they may know the verses but you have to hear the purports. As Prabhupada said, you know, sometimes people would ask Prabhupada who will be in charge of our movement after you go, Swamiji? And Prabhupada said, I will live forever by my books. So Prabhupada's books are the guidelines for the, our Krishna consciousness movement. And the Prabhupada's books are more important than anything else. Some people, they say, oh, Prabhupada's letters or Prabhupada's uh, lectures or Prabhupada's uh, conversations but the important thing is what's in Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada's books are the real instructions which we get from the pure devotee which is coming through the disciplic succession. And we want to hear regularly from Srila Prabhupada's books. We want to hear and understand Prabhupada's instructions. Prabhupada liked us to read his books regularly. Now it's very important for us to try to read all of Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada didn't just only write Bhagavad Gita. Many people, they write no, well, there was one famous Swamiji, he just wrote the first six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. They published the book, first six chapters. He didn't do any more. <laughs> and the, his followers said, nobody else can understand the rest of the Bhagavad Gita. No one can understand. It's nonsense. Of course, there's 18 chapters, the Bhagavad Gita, first six chapters, are just simply the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, bringing us to the yoga ladder and understanding the culmination at the top of the yoga ladder is bhakti, devotion. But we have to go on from there and understand the other, the other chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. So we have to hear, and we have to hear from devotees. Srila Prabhupada went to America, he didn't even have a Bhagavad Gita. And somehow they came across a copy of the Bhagavad Gita which was published by a politician in India at that time. He was a prominent politician. 
And so when they used his book, then they found many mistakes in the Bhagavad Gita, in the commentary. There were many uh, interpretations which were not according to the disciplic succession. And you hear wrongly, then you get the wrong idea. Just like the Hare Krishna mantra. Now there are many people who also chant Hare Krishna mantra, but they don't all chant with the same mood as devotees. When the devotees are chanting Hare Krishna mantra, they're chanting as devotion, with devotion for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. But other people, they're maybe chanting Hare Krishna and their, desire, their mood may be to become Krishna or to merge into the oneness or simply to, an to annihilate their existence, voidism. So Prabhupada was preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya in our prayer to Srila Prabhupada. We say, Goravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine. By preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya, we can defeat these two uh, wrong philosophies, Nirvishesha and Shunyavada. Nirvishesha, the oneness, Nirka, that the Lord has no form, and Shunyavada, that everything is void, nothing, there's nothing, nothing is real. That's a Buddhist philosophy. They will say, they will say, you, we don't exist and the world is false, nothing is real, right? So we say, all right, then I'm going to take this brick and hit you on the head. It's not real, right? That's how we defeat their philosophy. Beat them on the head with a brick. They're so stupid, they say nothing is real. So the brick is not real, your head is not real, you don't exist. So I beat you on the head, you rascal. So there's many philosophies like that and we have to, we have to defeat them, we have to expose them. What you want to be careful of is hearing from these people. If we hear from them, then we get affected. It has poisonous effects. The example is given. Milk touched by the lips of the serpent will give a poisonous effect. In the same way, if we hear the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra from the wrong source, it will have another effect a different effect, a poisonous effect. And we have to be very careful. So Bhagavad Gita is very popular. There are so many editions, more and more editions of Bhagavad Gita are coming out every year. There's new editions, this author, that author, this com someone else writes their own commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. We have to be careful and recognize what is actually a genuine Bhagavad Gita and it should be presented in parampara according to the disciplic succession. Lord Krishna describes himself in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita that because the knowledge in course of time was lost, Lord Krishna had to come and re-establish it. Yoga nashta parantapa. The Lord Krishna established the system of the disciplic succession, but in course of time the knowledge was lost. And therefore Lord Krishna had to come again and re-establish the message. And similarly, Srila Prabhupada and Bhaktivinoda Thakur, great acharyas like that, they also had to re-establish Lord Chaitanya's movement. In the times of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, there were very, very few Vaishnava. He could not even find a copy of the Chaitanya Charitamrita 
It took him a long time to find out a copy of the Bhagavad Gita. Oh, no, not Bhagavad Gita. Chaitanya Charitamrita. The Chaitanya Charitamrita. He didn't know where to find a copy. Very difficult. Finally, he found it. So, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur did a lot of research to find out books like Upadeshamrita. Rupa Goswami wrote Upadeshamrita. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was traveling and he happened to meet somebody who had a library and he was looking through the man's library and he found a copy of Upadesh Amrita by Rupa Goswami. And when Bhaktivinoda Thakur found the book, he was so happy, he was elated, he was overjoyed to find this wonderful treasure. Nobody knew about it, but he found it in the man's library written by Rupa Goswami. And today we are enjoying these things. And even before Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the Goswamis of Vrindavan, they also researched the scriptures. Srinivasacharya glorifies the Goswamis. He says, Nana Shastra Vichari Naikana Pano Sad Dharma Samstapako. That he offers his respects to the six Goswamis who were scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles for the benefit of all human beings. Thus they are honored all over the three worlds and they are worth taking shelter of because they are, engaged, they are absorbed in the mood of the gopis and are engaged in the transcendental loving service of Radha and Krishna. So this, these are the kind of people we want to hear from. People like the Goswamis, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and Rupa Goswami, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, and our own founder Acharya Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We hear from these great Acharyas and we know by hearing from them we are safe. That's a bona fide source of knowledge. But we hear from other places, if you hear outside the disciplic succession, away from the parampara, then you're asking for trouble. You're going to be misled. You're going to hear the wrong things. And when we, when we go off track, then it's very difficult to get back on track. Just like if you're on driving and you go off track and you're on, in your car, you miss the road, it's hard to find the right road, to get back onto the right road again. So we have to be very cautious in practicing devotional service. Srila Prabhupada writes in one purport that the path of devotional service is easy for those who are straightforward and genuine. But for those who are duplicitous and not straightforward, then it's very difficult. So some people do find Krishna consciousness very difficult. It doesn't satisfy their material desires. You have to understand Krishna consciousness is not actually really meant for satisfying our material desires. Although certainly people with material desires can worship Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam says, Akama Sarva Kamova Moksha Kama Udaradi Tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param. Whether it doesn't matter if one has all material desires or no material desires or desires liberation, everyone can worship Krishna. Everyone has a right to worship Krishna. And we have the example long ago. In the Satya Yuga, 
Dhruva Maharaj was there. And Dhruva Maharaj had very strong material desires. He wanted to get a big kingdom. Dhruva Maharaj was the, the son of Uttanapada. And Uttanapada was the son of Swayambhuva Manu. And Swayambhuva Manu was the son of Lord Brahma. So Dhruva Maharaj, he had been upset because he was trying to get onto the lap of his father, Maharaj Uttanapad. His father was a emperor, he had a great kingdom. But his father had two wives. One was Suniti, one was Suruchi. Dhruva was the son of Suniti. And Suruchi was the younger wife. So she was the favorite wife. Right? Just like in Ramayana, we know in Ramayana, Maharaj Dasarath had three principal wives. And Kaike was the youngest wife. And so Goshyaya, she was the oldest. And Sumitra, they were not so much in favor. They were not so much appreciated. They were there because they were the wives. They'd been, they were, they'd been married to Uttanapat. But the young wife, Kaike, was more prominent in the life of Dasara. So similarly, Suruchi was more prominent for Uttanapad. And when Dhruva Maharaj tried to get on the lap of his father, then Suruchi spoke harsh words. Sometimes women can speak very harsh. Men also come, <laughs> not just women, <laughs> men can also speak harsh. We have that name, we have harsh tongues, you know, we have, to, we have to learn to control the tongue. It said, Bhagavad Gita said, speaking in the mode of goodness, we should cultivate the mode of goodness, is to speak words which are pleasing, truthful and pleasing. Difficult, right? <laughs> well, Every, why should we say in Chinese, everything is difficult in the beginning, right? So, yes, we have to practice, we have to practice cultivating these qualities, the mode of goodness. We're passionate and we're, we're rajagun and tamagun, we have to become the mode of goodness, we have to become sattvagun, we have to practice. So, Suruchi, because she was Rajagun, she told Dhruva, you get down, you're not born from my womb, you cannot sit there. You want to sit on your father's lap, you have to come from my womb. You have to take birth again and take birth in my womb, then you'll be able to sit on your father's lap. Wow, heavy, huh? Ooh. So Dhruva Maharaj, he was really upset. And so he went, then his mother instructed him, go to the forest, go and find God. God can help you. Who can help you? Mother said, I can't help you. I'm not the favorite one of your father. And then Dhruva said, who can help me? She said, you go to God. He can help you. When you have troubles, the good advice is take shelter of Krishna. You have problems, you have some trouble, take shelter of Lord Krishna. In your troubles, if you approach Lord Krishna, certainly He will give us solace. He will help us. So Dhruva Maharaj was inspired. All right, I'm going. Where do I find him? In the forest. Oh, okay. And he goes off to the forest. He had material desires. What was his desire? I want to get a kingdom greater than not just my father, not just greater than my grandfather, greater than my great-grandfather. 
I want to get a kingdom greater than Lord Brahma. Wow, that's ambition. Very ambitious young boy, only five years old, you know. Ooh. He had so much drive huh? that he could go off to the forest and he did it. Even though Narada Muni came and tested him and tried to discourage him. So we learn from this example of Dhruva Maharaj that even though we have material desires, we can worship Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is so kind, Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna, they are so kind that they will tolerate anyone who comes and worships them. And the, but the benefit we get from worshipping Lord Krishna is different from the worship of other devatas. You may worship other devatas. We know there's many temples here in Malaysia. We've got Ganapati and Amma and Murga and Dang, so many, many temples, right? So the benefit of worshipping Lord Vishnu or Krishna is that they purify that even though we come with material desires, they will purify us. You worship other personalities, other divine, other heavenly beings, celestial beings, they're not going to purify. But Lord Krishna, Lord Jagannath, Lord Vishnu, they purify. When we worship them, they purify us. And Dhruva Maharaj, he got his wish. He got the kingdom. He got a, the biggest kingdom anybody could get. And he also got purified. And so that was the blessings of worshipping Lord Krishna, doing bhakti yoga. So we shouldn't think, oh no, I'm not qualified, I can't do this, I'm not qualified. No, bhakti yoga is for everyone. You have material desires? Probably we all have material desires. Who doesn't have material desires? Everyone. Some, to some degree, some more than others. But we have some, some kind of desires. But if we worship Lord Krishna, He will not only satisfy these desires, but he will also purify us. So this is the benefit of worshipping Lord Krishna. So we will ask if there are any questions. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, in, in the beginning of the march, you were saying that uh, Chaitanya Prabhu asked a question to Prabhupada and he's mentioned that uh, one should remain in his position and then continue devotional service. So my understanding is that um, this is something which is uh, recommended for the neophyte or is it also for applicable for everyone? Because the doctors, Rupa Goswami, Sanatha Goswami, they all also let go of their position. Raghunath has also let go of their position. So maybe you can explain this. Okay, yeah. Well, yes, Rupa and Sanatana Goswami, they left because they were situated in unpleasant association. They were living in Ramakeli. Ramakeli is a wonderful place. If you've not been to Ramakeli, you must go. It's so amazing. So the Ramakeli is where Rupa and Sanatan were there. And Ramakeli, the interesting thing about it is, <laughs> it's very popular with tourists. Not because of Rupa and Sanatan, but because of the Nawab. The Nawab was staying there. The Nawab had his uh, palace there and, 
and you can see the place where Rupa or where Sanatana Goswami was confined. The Nawab arrested him because he didn't come to office and he had him put in confinement. So that place is there. Anyway, Ramakali, it, it's, it's like another Vrindavan. There's just so many cows wandering everywhere and it's green and it's quiet and peaceful and there are lakes everywhere, there are these kuns everywhere. It's really a quite a very special place. We have a temple, we have a center there now anyway. We've, anyway, we purchased land and they're making a, their plan to do something to develop a cent center there. So anyway, Rupa and Sanatan were living there in the service of the Nawab. And the Nawab, of course, is engaged in cow killing. Not only of cow kill killing brahmanas also, killing people and many different things. They were so it was not a pleasant situation. So when the atmosphere is not conducive to Krishna consciousness, then you do have to change. But you have to change with caution. You have to be cautious. And you see Rupa and Sanata and how they did it. They wrote to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya came there all the way from Jagannath Puri. He came there to Ramakali and he met Rupa and Sanatan. And he, told, he had, of course, he also advised them, you know, better you get out from this place. So they gave up everything. And they were not young. They were in their elderly age when this happened. So they did leave everything. But they didn't do it without sanction. The sanction came from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. And he encouraged them. Yes, this is the right thing to do. And so they left. But generally, uh, we shouldn't do things abruptly. You can have a plan. There is, of course, the Vedic culture. Van ashrams are there, just like there's Grihastha ashram. And after Grihastha ashram, then there's the Vanaprastha ashram. You retire retire from the material duties and you take up spiritual duties. You don't have to change everything. You just give up the material duties and you take up the spiritual duties. The focus is on spiritual culture rather than economic interests. Of course you have to make arrangements for your maintenance. You've got to be able to survive. If you give up your job suddenly and you have responsibilities, then that is not good. So you have to take, you have to plan everything carefully. And Srila Prabhupada, he only changed his position with the greatest reluctance. He was very cautious about changing his position. So you can, you, people want to change their position, you, you have to be guided by authorities. You sh it should be sanctioned. Just like you have a family, you have to make arrangements to provide for them. You cannot just go off and leave your family without taking, without making some arrangement for their maintenance. Those things are required. Devotees should not be neglectful. At the same time, retirement is there. It's not that you have to keep working and working and working until you drop. In some places, some parts of the world, people never retire. They just keep working and working. And they have money. And they have every, everything's paid, but they keep working and work. Why? Oh, my grandchildren. Oh, come on. You have to worry about your grandchildren? 
you've got enough for your children or oh we've got grandchildren I, I need to have some money give my grandchildren <laughs> this is not necessary you know you have to consider your own situation what is your situation the get you're getting old you have to you have to think about the next life you're going to leave the body where are you going to go take birth again in your office go back to the same factory working in the same factory you don't want to do that we have to make arrangements for the next life and that requires cultivating some detachment so that is required we have to cultivate some detachment from money and the family and all of these things so it's it's a challenge we have to do understand though there is the culture that culture is there to make arrangements to get free from the attachments which we have and how to get free from the attachments simply by becoming attached to Krishna the more we're attached to hearing and chanting and doing service for Krishna then the less we're attached to the material things but if our family are Krishna conscious then there's no harm the family and the home you can have also regular kirtan and regular worship of the deity and everything can go on naturally but preaching should also go on we don't just only preach to our own family we want to give out Krishna consciousness and the more we give Krishna consciousness to others the more we get Krishna consciousness ourselves so we're seeing with the program with the like the Gita Gyan program many people coming forward taking an interest eager to hear it's surprising how many more people are out there who are looking who are waiting just for the devotees to give them that opportunity to hear about Bhagavad Gita or about Lord Krishna so that is our our responsibility to try to share whatever we've got if we don't use what we have ourselves if we don't share it with others it will simply dry up it will simply evaporate so it has you you have to distribute you have to be willing to give Krishna consciousness otherwise our own Krishna consciousness will not develop so this is important for us whatever doesn't matter what ashram you're in everyone can do that everyone can be distributing Krishna consciousness everyone is encouraged to become guru Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Ramananda Rai Kiba Vipra Kiba Nasi Sudra Keni Nai Ye Krishna Tadva Vet Se Guru Hai Whether you are a Vipra meaning Brahmana or a Nyasi a renunciate or a Sudra Ramananda Rai was Sudra but Lord Chaitanya was asking questions to him he said why because you know Krishna Tattva you know the saints of Krishna so you can become guru so the ladies also become gurus they're also teaching Gita Gyan they're bringing so many people to Krishna consciousness by their by their preaching we don't say oh no this is only for men Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said uh, 
Gibba, uh, he said that uh, even though one may be of low birth, striyo vaishas tata sudras tepiyanti param gatim. Low birth, we're all low birth in the Kali Yuga, not only women. Men are also low born. We're all low. Kali Yuga, Kalo Sudra Sambhava. In the Kali Yuga, everyone is Sudra and lower. So, whether you are a woman or a, a Sudra or whatever, you can attain the supreme destination. Striyo Vaishyas Tata Sudras Tepi Yanti Paramgatim. Krishna consciousness is for everyone. Look at me. I am low born. I am from Malecha society. But I've been hearing and chanting for many years. I got the mercy, I got the contact with Srila Prabhupada. I got the seed of devotion and I watered it. I'm watering it regularly. So in the same way, we encourage all of you, you have Srila Prabhupada's mercy coming to you through his followers and through his books and through his society. And Srila Prabhupada came here to Kuala Lumpur. He came to this city because he was thinking of all of you that in the future you will all want Krishna consciousness. So now you must take it very seriously and do this chanting. Yes? Hare Krishna, I If we do Bhakti Yoga for sense gratification, what would be the result of it? Well, Krishna will fulfill your desire. Krishna is in the heart of everyone. He knows our desires. Just like Dhruva Maharaj, he had the desire. The Lord gave him the kingdom he wanted. He knew the desire. Dhruva Maharaj said, no, no, I don't need it now. But Krishna said, no, no, you have to take it. You wanted it, you take it. So, yes, Krishna knows what is your desire and he will give you. you want, but you have to worship him like Dhruva. <laughs> you have to be very determined. Dhruva got his kingdom six months, in six months. But he did a lot of tapasya, great austerity. We cannot do that. But we can, according to our ability, we can also try to do service for Krishna. Chanting and hearing, you get the same benefit. And preaching, just telling people about Krishna, you get a lot of mercy. Maharaj, please accept a number of distances that I've already mentioned about Maharaj. Maharaj, I wanted to ask, when we preach, like we encourage people to chant, right? So the goal of chanting is pure devotional service, but when we go to public, we don't, we can't really say that on the immediate note, let's say like friends, relatives and everything. So if we encourage that by saying that, you know, you will get your problem truly and all those material things, is that exactly uh, going against the ten offenses of chanting? Uh, like we're not supposed to be thinking, uh, we're not supposed to be chanting with material attachment and everything. So I'm just asking if we reach out to people in this manner at the beginning, uh, it's not ideal, but is it okay like, uh, to, to encourage people to take up chanting saying, you know, you'll get really, you'll get all this. you get, well, we, certainly we can tell them, you could get, you'll get peace of mind, you can feel happiness. You know, we say chant and be happy. We're telling people chant and be happy. So you'll get, you'll get relief from distress. 
Yeah, that's all right. You can say like that to people. And certainly, these are the benefits, immediate benefits of bhakti yoga. It creates auspiciousness, the beginning of auspiciousness and relief from distress. So people are coming and they're suffering, they're in misery. And so we do, we do advise them, we teach them, chant. You'll feel relief. One of the devotees recently wrote to me, she's, in, she's got cancer and she's got a big ulcer in her stomach and she's getting some, some treatment for it. But she said that the disease because she's in this disease, terrible health crisis has increased her devotion so much. She said, I feel so much more attached to the Holy Name and to Krishna than ever. And so yeah, it's good. Am I, am I supposed to tell her, no, it's, oh, you can't do that, that's material? <laughs> no, of, of course, I tell her, no, it's very good. Encourage everyone. We tell everyone, chant the holy name. It doesn't matter whether they have all desires or no material desires. Whatever position, whatever condition they're in, we encourage them, chant the holy name. And as, as Mataji asked, what, what about people with material desire? They'll get their desires. It will be fulfilled. If Krishna sanctions it, if Krishna wants, he can fulfill it. It will depend. Well, depend, you know, maybe, maybe the desire may not be fulfilled in this lifetime. Maybe you have to wait till the next lifetime before you fulfill that desire. I don't know. If the person, the person will say, I can chant Omitra, or I can chant Kwanshi Pusha, what should I need to chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra? So how do we answer this question? Well, we have to tell them that yeah, you're chanting a mantra, but your mantra is material. It's a, your mantra is a material sound vibration. Our mantra is a spiritual sound vibration. Our mantra is not of this material world. It comes from the spiritual world. Their mantra, their, their meditation, their mantra, you know, one, one lady, she was telling me, she said, when I chant, I feel, you know, I feel it on my, like this. I told her, I said, I said, you don't feel anything in the heart? I said, you only feel it up here? I said, you're supposed to feel it in the heart. What are you doing? You know? <laughs> I saw she was, oh, <laughs> she was embarrassed, she realized. So our chanting is from the heart, you know. We're not concerned with this thing, this brain, this head. We want to experience the spiritual sound vibration. We say, Golokera Premadan Harinam Sankirtan. The holy name comes from the Goloka, descends. Krishna appears on our tongue. It's not material. And we can feel, when you, as soon as you start to chant, you can feel the effect. You can feel how the whole room becomes surcharged with spiritual energy just by chanting the holy name. So, they have to try it. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. So if they chant, then you know. You have, you see the difference. All right? Okay, Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Um, so, uh, Guru Prabhu has prepared a ghee lamp for Guru Maharaj to offer to the Lakshmis. And after offering the ghee lamp, then uh, 
there is a uh, sweet to be distributed by Guru Maharaj and uh, anyone who likes to give the Akshana, you can also come and uh, give the Akshana to Guru Maharaj. Also, we'd like to uh, make an announcement. Um, there will be a program here as well tomorrow. So initially we had posted that tomorrow on Friday, uh, no, there will be a stream of Bhagavadam program in the morning at uh, 8 o'clock as usual. And in the evening, initially we had posted that there will be a program at uh, Inshallah, uh, but uh, there has been a change of plans and program will take place here in the temple, just like today. So today, tomorrow, Saturday uh, programs in the evening and in the morning, Srimad Bhagavatam. And on uh, Sunday, there will be a Sunday feast of course, Guru Maharaj will be here. And there will also be a initiation ceremony. And in the evening, he will be going to Tadopula Client Center for the Sunday feast over there. Uh, and we will advise you as the programs come, as, as it comes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Also, uh, as there will be initiations on Sunday, uh, any prospective candidates for initiation, shelter, uh, aspiration, uh, you need to come on Saturday morning. Guru Maharaj will be here and there will be an interview session. So, Saturday morning, right after the Srimad Bhagavad class, all aspiring initiates uh, and, and shelter candidates, please come. Hare Krishna. Okay, Narayanati Prabhu is saying there are some flowers which offer flowers. Offer them? No, no. Okay, not offer. <laughs> so there are some fresh flowers outside. Uh, you notice uh, welcome to take the flowers and bring it home. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, please come forward. Uh, Guru Maharaj is uh, giving out to Shagam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, they are coming on Saturday, not too long there. And then Sunday we are planning. Yeah, it's a change of time. Yeah, it's a change of time. Yeah, it's a change of time. Yeah, it's a change of time.